Hello, I'm uh, Chuck Kelly. I teach sixth grade at Chapel Glen Elementary. And today we are learning about what are the structures of the sun and what features we can see on the sun. Hey, thanks, Chuck. That was a great introduction. So today's lesson, not only about the structures of the sun, but you know that our sun is also a star. <laughs> Not only is it a star, it has a name, and the name of our sun is the is Sol, and that's why it's called the solar system. So we got a lot to learn about the sun. Let's get started. So what uh, was one thing that surprised you about this photo that we just looked at? Jaden. The sun was bigger than the planets. How, I was surprised how small Pluto is to all, um, compare it to all the Earth things. Even though Jupiter is a big planet, the sun is way bigger than all of them. So if you thought that the sun was big, wait until you see this next picture I'm going to show you. Check this one out. Now just study this picture for a little bit so you can see what is labeled. Did you find the sun? Soul. Uh, it is one yeah. pixel. You, it is invisible. So turn to your neighbor right now. What's one thing you knew and one thing that shocked you or surprised you about this picture? I was surprised that the sun was the smallest out of all of them. I'm going to review the vocabulary for this week's lesson. This vocabulary is about the structure of the sun, but some of these words are kind of more of a process that the sun does, what the sun does instead of kind of what it's made of. So let's separate them out and let's get started. All right, so we've divided up our vocabulary words into whether it's a structure of the sun or a process of the sun, something that it does. So we decided that the structures were the protons, the hydrogen, the helium, the photosphere, the chromosphere, the radiation zone and the convection zone, and also the core. And then the processes that it does, the prominences, solar flares, solar winds, and the nuclear fusion. So while I stand in this solar radiation and, and absorb the energy, I want you guys to label the parts of the sun on your worksheet. Use the internet. Find something. Use our vocab. Finish this labeling the structures of the sun. Most likely we won't have solar flares, solar wind, or nuclear fission because those are processes. Uh -oh. I love this video. It's a NASA video and it's the heliophysics. The word helio is Greek for the sun. I used to live and teach sixth grade in Egypt, and my town I lived in was right next to a town called Heliopolis, the city of the sun. So if you see the word helio, that means the sun. And NASA did this heliophysics where they studied the sun. This was five years in the making. orbiting the sun, making observations. This is our sun, 92 million miles away. It takes up 99.9% .9 of all of the matter in the solar system. The rest of it would fit in a small dot. So NASA collected 2,600 terabytes of data. And this to me is both fascinating and deadly and amazing. Remember, the Earth is about the size of my little finger compared to the sun. Here's a prominence shooting up and the magnetic field pulling it back down. This is Mercury going transit across the front of the sun. You see solar flares, you see what's called CMEs, coronal mass injections, look at that. Each one of those larger than the 
the earth. Amazing. And from the sun comes the solar wind. So what's really cool about this is every time you see something like an explosion on the sun, like right there, bam, that actually affects our satellites, our TV, our radio communication here on Earth. The most amazing thing about this, it's so large and so far away that it takes almost eight minutes for the light and the energy from the sun to get to the Earth. So when you see one of these explosions, it's not even going to reach us for eight minutes. Sunspots, so many cool things about the sun. Or Helios, cool stuff. There's a transit. So if you're like me, I had a hard time understanding the difference between a solar flare and a solar prominence, okay? And here's how I read about it that helps me understand it. See this thing right here? It's like a cannon going off. When you see a cannon flash, the flash is the solar flare. The cannonball is the prominence. So here is a solar flare, and if it shoots up and pulls back in, is a prominence. And this is just amazing. We've seen a lot of cool things about the sun, but I got a question for you. Here's a question most people don't know. Here's a question most adults don't know. Here's a question most college kids don't know. And the question is, where does the sun get its energy? I want you to think about that. I'll see what you have to say. The planet's cores. The planets? Yeah. Okay. Corona. The corona. <laughs> you don't know? You will soon. From the corona. From the corona? Protons and hydrogen. Protons and hydrogens? What are those? How does the sun get its energy? By the core. By the core? Anybody else? How does the sun get its energy? Hydrogen and nuclear fusion. Hydrogen and nuclear fusion? Wow, that's pretty cool. Let's take a closer look at this. So the sun gets its energy from nuclear fusion. And nuclear fusion, whenever something is fused together, that means two things are joined together and they're permanently stuck together. So this is the definition of nuclear fusion. A reaction where two atomic nuclei fuse together and create a larger nucleus and during that process they release energy. So the sun gets its energy from nuclear fusion. Stuff getting fused together and energy being released. So this is the nuclear fusion model according to study.com of what happens on the surface or on the sun. So when two hydrogen atoms collide together, they get fused together and form a helium atom. And when that happens, lots of energy is released. Much like this next part, where two cars are joined together and create a new car in a crash. What kind of car would you call that, Mr. Cowley? I would call it a, a nuclear Ford Fusion. <laughs> Here we go. You can view a fusion reaction like a car, car collision you might see in a movie. Two cars slam into each other and get stuck permanently together while little pieces of them go flying off in every direction. So these two cars, when they join together, they're still, it's still kind of like some pieces of the hydrogen are here, pieces of the hydrogen are here, and they join together to create one big helium. Fun, but here's the deal. When these two protons come together, they don't want to be together, so when they do come together, they're so crowded, there's so many of them up on the sun that they're bound to crash into each other. And when they crash into each other, they give off energy, and our model, this is the energy. Now they also lose mass. Mass means this energy comes out from the sun as x-rays, gamma rays, light, heat, thermal radiation, nuclear, all of this stuff is coming out of the sun. But it's a little more interesting than that. See what happens when a couple of these come together and crash, they form something new. They lose their, their mass, they give off energy, and they form hydrogen, turns into helium. So hydrogen comes together, gives off energy, and turns into helium. And that's how we get that heat from the sun. 
It's kind of cool. But there was a guy who said this even better than me. He said, and this is really kind of cool. Maybe you've heard of this equation before. E equals mc squared. That's what I just showed you. The energy from the sun equals the mass times the C. Now, most people don't get C. Most people don't know what C stands for. But C, when Einstein first wrote this, he had E equals mv squared, meaning velocity of light. This is light squared. And we know light is a constant. Light travels at 186,000 miles per second. And that is what's going on every second on the sun. Energy is being released because the mass of these things come together times the speed of light and give off energy. So you're probably thinking then, eventually this sun, if it keeps losing mass and losing mass, it's going to weigh less. When that happens, something really cool happens. When all the energy comes out of the center of the sun, the gravity is so strong that the outside of it completely crushes in and explodes out and goes supernova, destroying all of our planets when it does that. But don't worry. Keep cleaning your room because it took 4 billion years to get here, and it might take a few billion more years before it uses up all of its mass, crushes it on itself, and explodes out. So what you should learn from what I just said is that a star has a beginning, a life, and an end. And it's called the life cycle of a star. Okay, so a star actually has a life cycle. And so if we start with the very first thing, you have this cloud of gas and dust, particles. You might call it a, a, a gas nebula. It's tiny, tiny particles, but there are billions of them over billions of miles. So this is the start of these particles. Now, because of their forces, plus and minus, that's one. They start to come together. And when they start to come together, because of plus and minus forces, they're attracted to each other, and they start to build up. And every time one of these two hit each other, you start getting that nuclear fusion, and they start getting hotter and hotter. And they start, number three then, to start to form a disk. It's like a flat disk. And this flat disk is starting to rotate. So if you looked at it from the side, it might look like that. This is a disk of rotating of these gases coming together and they're starting to rotate. So you have two forces going on. You have gravity pulling them in and they also wanna fly out. But, but the electromagnetic, mag, electromagnetism pulling them in and wanting to pull out, this keeps happening until all of a sudden, this is one, two, three, under four, these things all come together and explode, things come together and explode, and you have a protostar, where these things have come together, exploded, and got hotter, and start building. And so, this is what's called a protostar. I'm no expert on this, but I, the reading I've done, Gases starting to come together, forming a disk, and gravity pulling in on it for a protostar to be formed. The life cycle of a star. So we learned a lot about the star, our sun, soul, in such a short time. You know, it's, its structures, where it gets its energy, how it's formed. There's a lot more to learn about it. I'm sure you guys will do some great research on this. But I'll tell you about our, uh, in the famous words of Carl Sagan, who used to come on TV and talk about the solar system and the stars. There are so many stars in the sky. When you look up, 
When you see those stars, remember our star, Sol, is the closest one. The next star, four and a half million light years away. The light's going at 186,000 miles per second. The thing I want you to remember is that when you look up at the sky at night, there are more stars in the sky than all the grains of sand on all the beaches and rivers in our world. And that's what Carl Sagan would say. When you look at the sky, there are so many stars. There's more stars than all the sand grains on this planet. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks, Mr. Callie. It was great. You guys are awesome. See you next time.